Hello everyone, it's Oliver from Minerva and this is a Minerva sew along video for the Thread Theory Designs Fairfield button up shirt. So today we will be showing you step by step how to sew the Fairfield button up Thread Theory Designs sewing pattern. It says this is a button up shirt with all of the classic details and a modern moderately slim fit. You can choose between a centre back pleat or create a more fitted shirt with long shaped darts. This pattern is listed as an intermediate sewing pattern with varied seam allowances mentioned throughout the instructions. This pattern suggests fabrics that are of medium to lightweight cottons, including but not limited to cotton shirting, poplin, lawn, oxford, chambray and flannel. It's good to note that if you do choose a fabric with a plaid, stripe or one-way print design, more fabric may be required to match up these patterns. Additional supplies other than fabric, you will need some medium weight fusible or sewn in interfacing. You will also need 10 buttons for the shirt. Now it's up to you what size you choose. However, this pattern does suggest one centimeter or three eighths of an inch or 1.3 centimeters or one half of an inch buttons. Alongside the 10 buttons for the shirt, if you are choosing to add the sleeve plackets, you will need an extra two one centimeter buttons. And again, two optional one centimetre or 1.3 centimetre buttons for the sleeve tabs. So it's really up to you which variation you're making and depends the amount of buttons you will need. Remember, you can save this video to come back to later as we will be giving you some helpful hints and tips along the way. So let's open up this pattern and we'll see what's inside. Obviously, the main portion of this pattern is the pattern pieces and it also includes a very in-depth instruction booklet from taking you from start to finish to sew your garment. Today, we will be sewing version two, which includes the long shaped darts and sleeve tabs. Now for this shirt, we have chosen to use this Lady McElroy Marley cotton lawn fabric. Now this color is Oxford and Navy it also comes in a few different colour variations, making it a perfect choice for any style. This is 100% cotton. It's a woven fabric with non-stretch. Naturally, there is a slight stretch on the bias, meaning that it is perfect for a slim fitted shirt such as this one. It's 140 centimetres or 55.1 inches wide. This lightweight fabric feels extremely soft on the skin and this abstract hand-drawn face pattern will look absolutely incredible as this Fairfield button-up shirt. With this, we are also using some Violene Vliazoline. This is the H180 Light Easy Fusible Interfacing. This is a lightweight interfacing and comes in at 90 centimetres or 35.4 inches wide. For the closures of this shirt, we will be using these hemline rounded translucent white buttons to match the colour of our fabric. Now for the thread, it's up to you if you want to use a contrasting or coordinating colour. For this garment, we recommend to use the Gutterman's Sew All Polyester Thread. Both strong and durable, this is a perfect thread for all of your general sewing projects. The 100 meter reels come in a wide range of different colours, meaning that there will always be a perfect colour match for your fabric. We will be using shade 111 to match the main colour of our fabric. So now that we have gathered all of our materials, let's get started. We know that everyone sews at their own pace, so throughout this video there will be many opportunities to pause the video so that you can spend as much time as you'd like on your sewing project. Of course, in order to prepare our fabric ready to sewing, it's advisable that you pre-wash your fabric. Now this should be done with the method that you intend to wash your garments once you have finished. Of course, this is to prevent any possible shrinkage in your first time washers. It's always great to follow the care instructions listed alongside each fabric on our website. However, if you are unsure, it's great to test wash a sample piece of fabric to find the most suitable way to wash your chosen fabric. We advise to wash this fabric at 30 degrees, but please take into consideration 10% shrinkage for all fabrics. Mm -hmm. 
So while our fabric is pre-washing, we can use the time to take our measurements so we can choose which size we need to cut out from our pattern pieces. Now for this shirt, you need a few different measurements. We are going to take the chest, shoulder width, waist circumference and the neck size. We need to collect the body measurements for the person who will be wearing the shirt. Now if it's yourself, you may need some extra help for some of the measurements. So for this shirt, the most important measurements are the chest circumference, shoulder width, waist circumference and neck size. You should choose the size based on your chest and shoulder measurements and you can adjust any other sizes should you need to fit them closer to any other measurements. I know already that my neck size is 15 and a half inches so let's take the rest of the measurements. So my chest there is 40 inches, my waist again is 32 and the hips around the widest part again is 41. Now I also know that my shoulder to shoulder measurement is around 16 inches. So now that we have all of our measurements written down, we can have a look of the body measurement size chart to choose the size that will fit us best. I can see here that my measurements are closest to the medium size. Now, if your measurements were between sizes, we always advise you to size up. However, if you do prefer more of a tight fitting garment, you can always stay at that size. This again is personal preference and how you like your garment to fit. You can also take a look at the finished garment measurement sheet for your size to make sure that the shirt will fit. So now that you have chosen the size of shirt to sew, we will be cutting out that corresponding size from all of the pattern sheets. So here we have the pattern sheets and a great tip is to iron these flat before you cut anything out. It will just reduce any of the creases in the pattern sheet, meaning that you will get more of a precise cut. So today we're going to show you how to sew variation two, and for that we will need all of the pattern pieces in the fabric and the interfacing also. So we're just gonna give these sheets a quick iron and then cut out our corresponding size. So I am going to be cutting around the full line for the medium size, as you can see it's going to be this one here. And for the pattern markings on each piece they are also labelled for the different sizes too. So now that we have cut out all of our pattern pieces for our size, we can start laying them on our fabric. Each pattern piece will tell you which part of the garment it is and how many you will need to cut and whether it's on the interfacing or the fabric. So now our fabric has been pre-washed and it is dry, we are going to lay out our pattern pieces on smooth ironed fabric as illustrated in the cutting layout diagrams. Now you can use pattern weights or pins to secure your pieces in place when you come to draw around your pieces to cut out. Cut around your pattern pieces and transfer all markings with chalk, pencil or a fabric marker to the wrong side of your fabric. Avoid marking on the right side in case the markings don't wash out fully. For this pattern we are going to avoid Avoid clipping into the seam allowance when marking notches because intact seam allowances will be needed for the flat fell seams. So this is a great opportunity to pause the video for you to cut out all of your pieces in the fabric and all of the corresponding pattern pieces in the interfacing. So now that you have all of your pieces cut out in your self fabric and interfacing, you can now start applying the interfacing to the corresponding pieces. Now it's great to know it says the interfacing pieces are slightly smaller than the main fabric pieces. So what you want to do is centre them to the wrong side of each fabric piece and apply them as it says in the diagram here. Now it is good to note that the only piece that should not be centred is the placket interfacing and this piece should be aligned along the neckline edge. So now that you have interfaced all of your pattern pieces, we can start making the shirt. So before we start to assemble our garment, it gives us a great tip here to prevent all neckline curves from stretching throughout the sewing process, stay stitch using one quarter of an inch seam allowance. This needs to be done on the left and right front pieces as well as both yokes. So stay stitching is the method of loosely stitching along the inside of a seam allowance of an edge. 
It will prevent the edge from stretching while you are assembling the garment and ensure a perfect fit at the end. So with a straight stitch, we're going to stitch one quarter of an inch into the seam allowance, just so that this neckline won't stretch when we are assembling our garment. So now that's complete, we can move on to step one. The right front of the shirt will have the buttons sewn to it. It includes a facing which is folded under as follows. Fold the fabric with wrong sides together along the first notch closest to the edge. Press this line and then fold the fabric under again at the second notch. Press that and then edge stitch one eighth of an inch from the folded edge. So this can be quite confusing at first glance, but if you follow the diagrams here, you can see that this is actually creating the placket of the front of the shirt. So now we have sewn down the right front, we are going to work on the left front. Step two says the left front of the shirt will have the buttonholes sewn into it. Fold the fabric with wrong sides together at notch one and then press. Fold again with wrong sides together at notch two and top stitch one quarter of an inch from the edge along notch three. So now I have pressed them two folds over. I'm going to sew one quarter of an inch along this very far edge of the pattern piece. Now we have sewn this, it says fold the placket outwards so that the pin tuck is pressed towards the shirt body. So now as you can see this already creates a lovely placket attached to the shirt and there's no need to finish any edges because they're all encased in the seams. So now all that's left to do is top stitch one quarter of an inch from the other placket edge just to make a nice symmetrical finish on that button band. So here are the two front pieces of the shirt with the button placket finished. As you can see, it is a lovely clean finish on both sides. Here is the pin tuck you've made. And as you can see, the pattern continues beautifully onto the shirt front. So for variation two, we will be sewing the darts in the back piece. To mark the darts on the wrong side of the fabric with chalk or pencil, pin the dart closed and begin stitching from the centre part of the dart, which will be the widest point, to the end. Now it tells you to not back stitch at the end, so to just run off the end, and then with the loose threads you can tie them together. We have lightly drawn the dart markings on the wrong side of the fabric. So now with our darts pinned in place, we are going to start from the middle, which is the widest area of the dart, and we're going to sew to either edge, making sure not to back stitch at the end, just to run off the end of the fabric. Now, a good point for this method is as well, don't cut your threads too close to the end. Leave yourself quite a bit of thread to give you enough room so that you can easily tie a knot. And we're going to do the same from the middle to the other side. So now we're going to repeat these steps for the other dart and then we will press both darts inwards towards the centre back. With this method, you are sure to get beautifully flat darts every time. So now we have sewn the darts into this back piece. We are going to work on attaching the yoke. Pin one of the yoke pieces to the shirt back so that right sides are facing and baste in place using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. We can baste with the machine as long as it's a long stitch with a lower tension. So with right sides facing, we are going to baste along this edge. Remember with a longer stitch length and a looser tension, we are going to sew 3 eighths of an inch from the edge. Pin the yoke facing to the shirt back so that the right side of the yoke is facing the wrong side of the shirt. So using this same seam line, we are going to use the right sides of the yoke against the wrong side of the shirt. So as you can see, we are encasing this back shirt piece between the two yoke sections. And now with these in place, we are going to sew again 3 eighths of an inch, but this time through all three layers of fabric.
Now this pattern recommends to grade the seam allowances, which basically means to cut each layer of fabric to a different length. Now this will just reduce bulk when you come to finish the seam. After that, we're going to press both yoke pieces away from this bottom fabric, and we are going to stitch one quarter of an inch along this seam to secure that edge in place. So once we have attached both yoke pieces to the back of the shirt, we can start working on the shoulder seams. Now button up shirts are usually made in a way that leaves no raw edges visible. Now to assemble the shoulder seams, we want to place the yoke shoulders and the shirt front shoulders with the right sides together, leaving the yoke facing free. Now remember, we will only be sewing through one yoke piece as we will come to the other piece later. So with right sides facing at the shoulder seams, let's sew these sides together. Remember, this is just a loose basting stitch to hold the pieces in place. So now we will repeat that for the other shoulder, making sure to only sew through one layer of the yoke. Now we are going to do these instructions slightly out of order, whether it's a misprint or not, we're not sure. However, it would be easier to save stay stitching the shirt neckline until after you have sewn both yoke pieces together. So we are going to move on to this third step in the shoulder seam section, where we roll up the shirt body, the front and back as tightly as possible. And we are going to sandwich it in between the yoke and yoke facing. So just like this diagram here, we are going to roll up the front and back portions of the shirt so that we can attach the shoulder seams of the yokes together. Sew the shoulder seams along the same stitching line as before using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So with the yoke facing here we're going to push that up and pin along these shoulder lines. We're going to sew here 3 8 of an inch and do the same on this side 3 8 of an inch. So now we are going to unbundle this shirt through the neckline and then press our seams. So now you can see the shoulder seams have been nicely encased within both yoke pieces. So now that our garment has been pressed, we are going to top stitch one quarter of an inch from the shoulder seam. So now we're going to stay stitch around the entire neckline to ensure that it won't distort when we are applying the collar band. With our scissors, we are going to clip two and not through at that line of stay stitching. If you create a free account with us at Minerva today, we will send you a discount code to use on your next order. And remember, if you sign up to the Minerva Craft Club, you will save 10% off all orders for the next 12 months. It's a great way to save money on your makes and also to support local, national and global charities. So we can move the body of the shirt aside for the time being because now we are going to work on the sleeve plackets. Place the placket piece on the sleeves so that the right side of the placket faces the wrong side of the sleeve. The tall main column is closest to the sleeve front and the Y shaped vent on the placket lines up with the placement line on the sleeve. So if we've transferred all of our markings, you can see this is the placement line and we are going to line that up with the Y shaped vent on the placket piece. Now we're going to also pin along this center line to secure the pieces together. We are going to stitch around the Y shaped vent following lines three and four to create three sides of a rectangle. We are going to cut through all layers, the sleeve and the placket between lines three and four. Cut into each corner to create a Y shape and cut as close to the stitching as possible at each corner. Clip horizontally towards line five so that you can fold over the one quarter of an inch seam allowance at the top of the column. So we're going to fold and press this one quarter of an inch as well as this side. We're going to press one quarter of an inch and also the very far side, we're gonna do the same. 
Create a triangle at the top of the main column by folding along the horizontal fold line. Press this and then fold the two corners inwards and press thoroughly. Ensure both sides of the triangle are equal and you can use a bit of glue or a pin to secure this in place before stitching. Flip the placket through the vent to the right side of the sleeve and then we will press along the vent edge. This is why it's important to make sure that you are clipping right as far as you can to the corner of this rectangle. So now we are going to press along the vent edges. Fold under along line two with wrong sides together to form the inner column. Edge stitch one eighth of an inch from the column edge. This will enclose the raw seam allowance on one side of the vent. Fold along line five with wrong sides together to form the main column. Folding in this way will move the main column towards the sleeve back so that it sits on top of the inner column. Pin and press. Start edge stitching one eighth of an inch from the column edge at the bottom of the sleeve. Stitch up to the top of the column, follow the point of the triangle and then stitch down the other side of the column about one inch. Pivot and stitch horizontally across the placket. This horizontal stitching will join the two placket columns together and enclose the raw edges at the top of the placket. Once our placket is installed on our sleeve, we can move on to the elbow sleeve tabs. Now this is obviously optional should you want to roll your sleeves up and be able to secure them in place with a sleeve tab and button. Place two sleeve tab pieces with right sides together and stitch using half an inch seam allowance, leaving the square end open. Grade the seam allowances and clip the corners to reduce the bulk. We're going to turn this tab right sides out, we'll press it flat and then top stitch one quarter of an inch around the edges. Pin the sleeve tab to the wrong side of the sleeve so that the triangle is pointed up so that the flat end is even with the sleeve tab marking line. We're going to stitch across the flat end of the tab at one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Enclose the tab's raw edge by stitching a rectangle. Stitch carefully because your stitching will be visible on the right side of the sleeve. So now you can repeat all of these steps for the other sleeve, which includes installing the placket around the cuff and also the sleeve tab if you require this for your variation. So now we're going to attach the sleeves and to sew a flat fill seam when attaching the sleeve, begin by prepping your sleeve piece, fold one quarter of an inch seam allowance towards the right side of the sleeve and press. Pin the sleeve to the shirt body with right sides together, matching the raw edge of the body with the pressed fold on the sleeve. Align the middle notches on the sleeve head with the shoulder seam and pin also at the front and back notches. We are going to follow the diagram here to pin the sleeve to the body of our shirt, keeping the folded seam allowance out of the way, stitch using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So if you look at the diagram, you can see that the sleeve is on the top, so that means it will be this way round. However, as this is the fold that we don't want to catch in our sewing, it's a lot easier if we turn it around to the other side and we sew this way so we can actually match up the raw edge of the body with the fold that we've already pressed in the seam. So we have the sleeve underneath and we can just alter it as the curve turned round so that the raw edge always matches up with that line that we've pressed in the seam. Also matching the notches at the shoulder and the front and back of the shirt. When dealing with the curves of this sleeve, it's best to go as slow as you like so that you can get a real precise stitch line. So once we've sewn that, you can trim the seam allowance of the body to around one quarter of an inch just to reduce the bulk. Obviously that's personal preference. Fold and press the seam allowance towards the body so that the fold encloses the body seam allowance. Stitch slowly along the folded seam allowance edge, press thoroughly once finished. So we are basically folding over that already pressed edge and then we're gonna fold it over again and sew that down along the edge. So we're encasing that raw edge within the seam and that is a flat fell seam. <laughs> so
So now that we have attached one of the sleeves with a flat felt seam, we can give that a press and repeat it for the other side. Use a tailor's hand to make it easier when you are ironing curved areas of your garment. For the main seams, the sleeve and side seams are also sewn using a flat fell seam. However, this time the folded seam allowance will be on the outside of the garment so that both lines of stitching are visible from the right side. The seam allowances are already offset so that you don't need to do any trimming. Pin the sleeve and side seams with wrong sides together and with the big and small seam allowances offset. So this bottom layer of fabric, which is the front of the shirt, I'm going to make sure I'm stitching at 5 eighths of an inch. However, the top layer of fabric, which is the back side of the shirt, it's only one quarter of an inch. So we're going to slightly offset the seams, ensure that the underarm seams match and stitch the entire seam. So now that we have stitched all the way down one side of the garment, it says that we need to press the remainder of the seam allowances towards the front, fold over the front seam allowance so the raw edges meet in the middle, and then flip both seam allowances towards the back so that all the raw edges are hidden. Edge stitch along the folded edge of the seam allowance to finish the flat fell seam. Now it's best to start at the hem and go towards the seam because the smaller that the cuff gets at the end, the harder it will be to stitch it down. However, it is possible, you just need to go slow and steady. We have sewn down the side seams with a flat fell seam. Now obviously these are going to be a lot easier than the flat fell seams attaching the sleeves as there is less of a curve. So again we're going to give the seam a final press and we can repeat all these steps for the other side. Now let's move on so we can add the cuffs to the sleeves. Prepare the sleeves for the cuffs by sewing the pleat. Lay the sleeves on your work surface with right sides facing you and bring notch A to notch B, which is the notch closest to the placket. And you're gonna press that pleat and baste along the bottom just to keep it in place. So we have sewn our pleat in place. We can now go on to prepare the cuff pieces. So you should have four of these cuff pieces cut out. For the cuff facing, you want to press one half of an inch along the straight line and press that flat. That's the side of the cuff that's going to be on the inside. So now we're going to put our cuff facing and our cuff piece right sides together and we are going to stitch all the way around the outer edge with one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Remember at the end to clip into your curves and grade the seam allowance so that the seam can lay nice and flat. So before you turn this cuff right sides out, we are going to pin it to the sleeve with right sides together. Ensure the cuff backing is pushed out of the way so it remains free from the stitching. We then want to stitch the seam using half an inch seam allowance, grade the cuff allowance to one quarter of an inch and press the seam allowance towards the cuff. So now we can flip the cuff right sides out. You can close over and pin or baste the cuff, making sure that that folded edge covers any of the raw edges. Edge stitch from the right side of the the cuff remove any visible basting. So now that we have edge stitched our cuff in place we can top stitch one quarter of an inch all the way around the cuff. So now you can pause the video and repeat all of these steps to add the cuff to the other sleeve. So now we have attached both cuffs to both sleeves. We can put this aside for a moment and we can now work on the collar, which is the last part that we're going to add to this shirt. Place the upper collar and under collar with right sides together. Stretch the under collar slightly to match the upper collar and pin. So we're going to pin these together right sides facing and we're going to stitch along the sides and the top of these pieces making sure to leave this uh, side free so that we can turn it out and we're going to be using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. 
We're now going to clip the corners and grade the seam allowance and press it flat. Now, because the under collar is slightly smaller and has been stretched to fit, it will naturally want to roll towards the under collar. So make sure it does that while you're pressing. To finish the bottom of the collar, make sure the raw edges are even, despite the fact that this will mean the upper collar appears slightly baggy. So we're going to base the bottom of this collar closed and top stitch around the sides and top edge of the collar at one quarter of an inch. So we can put the collar to the side for one moment and we are going to start work on the collar stand. Pin the interfaced collar stand to the shirt neckline with right sides together. A one quarter of an inch seam allowance should extend beyond either neckline edge. Now it does mention in this pattern that the collar band is intentionally drafted to be considerably smaller than the neckline. This encourages the shirt to curve over the collarbone and the collar to sit more close to the neck even when worn unbuttoned. Remember before when we stay stitched around the edge, we've actually unpicked one of the sides and we're using that to slightly shorten the neckline edge so that it fits a lot better with the collar stand. Again, making sure that there are no gathers in the neckline, but that it fits perfectly with the collar stand. So now let's sew these two together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now we're going to pin the collar to the collar stand so that the under collar faces the collar stand. So we want right sides together and the upper collar is going to be facing up. We're going to match at the center line and we're going to pin it together and we're going to just baste this onto the collar stand um, at one quarter of an inch seam allowance. With the remaining collar stand piece, we are going to turn up the bottom edge one quarter of an inch, and we're going to press that into place like this. That's what's gonna attach to the main shirt to cover all of the raw edges of the collar stand and collar. And we're basically going to enclose the collar within these two bands. With that extra bit that we left over the button placket of the shirt, we're going to start there and sew around this collar stand at one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now we're going to clip into the curves and grade the seam allowance just so that it lies flat and reduces the bulk in the seam. We can now turn it right sides out and press this flat. Pin the pressed under inner collar stand in place. Edge stitch around the entire collar stand. So similar to what we did with the cuffs, we are going to do it again with the collar stand. We will pin this down and edge stitch all the way along. So now we can give the collar a final shaping by pressing it against a tailor's ham or the curved end of an ironing board. So now we have finished the collar, all we need to do is press the shirt hem up one quarter of an inch twice to enclose the raw edge. Of course, you're gonna press this down and then sew all along to finish the hem of the shirt. Remember to go slow around some of the curves so you don't have any puckers or gathers in the shirt. So now we will give this hem a quick press and then all we have to do is add the buttons and buttonholes following the instructions for your variation. So here is the finished shirt. This is such a great sewing pattern with many intermediate sewing skills. It's a great idea if you want to challenge yourself with something a bit harder. However, if you are a little intimidated with the skill level of this sewing pattern, there is no need to worry as there is an extensive instruction booklet taking you through all of the steps in depth. This Lady McElroy fabric was incredibly easy to sew with and is a perfect choice for a shirt such as this one. We hope you have fun sewing along with us today and as always, we will tag all of the products mentioned in this video down below. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and we will get back to you. Of course, you can follow us here at Minerva for more videos like this one. And until next time, thank you for watching.